Last episode, I finally built a village for the workers in the industrial town and even trapped a couple forever in a villager breeder so that we can keep this dangerous place populated. This time, I built a huge new railway line to a brand new location and start preparations for our next project. Because I need a break from the savannah. We've been in the savannah for months and I'm pretty sure you do too. So we're going to leave. In fact, let's leave right now. And by right now, I guess I mean let's leave in eight minutes. Gang trains. We have a problem and that problem is this our main storage warehouse i mean it's great and all in that it stores many things we've still got lots and lots of space that's all well and good i can easily just dump my inventory in it when i get back from a build and most things get sorted straight away it really is very helpful but as we expand and we build new factories we're gonna start running into some problems because i also need to take things out of this building and run them into other factories and to be honest, that's just not really going to happen. It's not really been built for that. I didn't think ahead. So although we're bringing over loads of clay balls, for example, there's no way to extract these into another factory to go use them to make all the clay related things. And if we factor in all the bottlenecks we're going to start getting up here when we have other towns that are also sending stuff back here, it's just not really going to work. This location just isn't really suitable. There's too many narrow bits of track and there's not really a large flat area or anything like that where we can build a different distribution center. So that's exactly what we need. A great big distribution center. Somewhere where all the trains and everything from all the factories can go to a central place. And then from here, we'll just set up some kind of a system so when something gets low, we can just send off for it. And I think that's going to be the best solution. But to get all this to work, we're going to need a plan. But thankfully, I've already come up with one. Step one is to find ourselves a location. So we need to find ourselves somewhere to build this storage warehouse where it's not going to start clogging up the network. So basically, we don't want to build anything else over here because this stuff works fine. But if we start adding in more rails onto this section, we're just going to have more problems. So we could go flatten another village somewhere over here in the plains. That could work quite nicely. It's fairly central. But I think I also want sea access, which means maybe we're looking along this coastline here. Let's go check out this bay here, I think. So if we set a waypoint there, that's somewhere to check out. I think somewhere else I'd like to check out is down here. And that looks like a potential... Yep, there's another mansion there as well. So we've got three points marked on our map. Let's go check them out. Well, this first spot is a big fat no. It's a very cliffy kind of area. There's not really anywhere to build. I guess we won't be stopping here. We're going to have to go further. Let's go check out this one. So this bit here isn't too bad. Is I mean, there's a lot of jungle trees I'd need to clear, but it's a little bit flatter. I don't know if it's a big enough area, you know. I won't strike it off just yet. Let's go check out the third place, which is another 2,000 blocks this way. Jeez. Well, this is already looking a lot flatter. Maybe a bit thin, though. Though, I'll tell you what, this is a nice bit of land. It's fairly flat. I mean, there's a lot of trees to clear and a... Well, there's some problems with the locals, I guess. We're going to have to clear those out. But we could even repurpose that building for something in future. Oh, and there we go. Look, if we look on the mini-map, we can see the space we've got. That looks like a good-sized island. And it's dark oak as well, which means we've got nice bright grass, which is going to be amazing after what we've been dealing with in the savannah. Yeah, I think I can picture the area. This could work. We'll save clearing that out for later, though. But now what we need to do is work out a train line. It looks like we're going to be going past another mansion there as well. But maybe our best bet is just to continue off of this line here. And then we can go through here. That all looks fairly foresty. This is good. We're ignoring the mountains. Oh, okay. Maybe right through the middle of that mountain. But pending the terrain height differences we'll probably have to go around this one as well this could work out quite nicely and then at the bottom here just a big bridge there or maybe a couple of bridges just to get across onto this island i'd say that's step one of the plan complete location found step two is the railway now we found a location i need to build a railway line to said location which means we need to jump on our railway making contraption put on some funky music lay some rail and dig some holes let's go
five and a half Christmas films later, I think we're actually done. I have a rail that's got two lines and goes all the way back to our main area. In fact, if we look at the map here, you can see where it connects up. It's a very straight rail, this one. But I have got gravel down on pretty much all of it. I still need to do some bridges, as you can see, and I've still got some tunnels to do. And I've also removed about 200 floating trees. So it should all be clear on the top of the track as well. And that means we're on to step three, which is clearing the land. And for that, we're gonna need a few things. So let's quickly head home. And to clear that land, we are, of course, going to be making use of this, our massive drill. But I want to make a few modifications first. For those modifications, I'm going to need a buttload of iron, lots of andesite alloy, and I'm going to need a bit of time to make all these components. So I'll see you in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a buttload more storage. And then I'm going to add some more drills just to make it a bit taller. We don't want to leave any floating trees where we're going. Something else I'm going to do is temporarily strip out a bunch of these, put some temporary blocks down, and I'm going to stick a bunch of harvesters on the front here because that way we can collect a whole bunch of leaves as well. No point in wasting the opportunity. And then we can just chuck those drills back in. So this should clear away the land and the trees and also collect us some leaves along the way. Although it would help if I glued it together. Right, that's better. We've got it all this time. Let's go destroy an island. couple more Christmas films later we've got a massive area we can work with we've obviously got a lot of work to do around the edges here but this should be plenty of space for at least a little while and I've also extended the track along here because this is where we're going to build our first building it has just occurred to me I could probably do with my airship so we best go pick that up and because we've got so much stuff stored on here it's unlikely we're actually going to be able to pick it up because there'll be too much data so what we're actually going to do is just quickly remove some of these more full drawers. That should hopefully be enough. And what we'll do is we'll just put them back in place once we get to the new location. So let's do that. And hopefully, yeah, look at that. We can just pick it up. And we didn't leave any lava in it this time either. Or a monkey. So I've relocated the airship to the site of our new distribution center, which is going to be basically all around here. But before we make a start on that, I think I want to deal with this. Because we've got some pretty nasty neighbors over there, and I don't want to remove the building. I might use it for something in future, but I don't like the idea of there just being loads and loads of pillagers. So we're going to be brave and just pile on in there and hope for the best, I guess. If I can find the entrance, that is. Where is it? Aha, it's down by the coast. Nice armor trim. Just like that, the place is clear. Excellent. That wasn't too difficult at all. Just a couple of arrows stuck in me, apparently. But we did manage to get the Vex armor trim as well as six totems, which is nice. But for now, I think we can crack on with this building, safe in the knowledge that the nasty neighbors have gone. But if you have any ideas of what we can use that building for, do let me know. I mean, I'm probably going to have to change it up if we decide to keep it anyway. But yeah, let me know what you think. So now we're just about ready to build. Let's grab a few bits and maybe chop down some trees. In fact, if I come up to the top deck here and have a look out, I've already gone. Magic. It's literally the next day in real life. But I just needed to chill out for a bit. So I decided to chop down all these trees. I've sorted out the landscape a little bit around the front here and the side. And yeah, we've still got a big old mess at the back and on that side. But for now, we've got plenty of area to work with. And well, way more space than we're going to need anytime soon. But at least it means I haven't got to cut down any more trees anytime soon. A 
apart from them ones and them ones, but it's fine. But what I'm going to do is start figuring out this distribution center. So I'm going to want a number of buildings to be able to store vaults of different types of resources, pretty much just the core resources we're getting out of our basic farms. We're going to need water tanks to store stuff in. And of course, we're going to need a power station to power the whole area because I do want to put a bunch of factories around here as well. But let's start with this distribution center type area. And I think I'm going to start just by placing a block around about here. And I guess we're going to build off of this. First thing I'm going to need is a big old platform to work stuff out on. And I'm thinking something like that should work nicely. We'll probably end up duplicating whatever we build here on this side as well. But my plan is to essentially have a line of vaults across here and a loading system. But I guess that's what we're going to need to work out next. Because I want to make sure that the train's only actually picking up what it was sent here to collect. And that means we're going to be using a whole bunch of redstone links and locking mechanisms. And probably a whole bunch of stations too. Let's see if we can figure this out. So I think what I'm going to do is work backwards from the train unloading point. And see if we can figure it out that way. So if we have, say, for example... Maybe 10 volts on each side, two sets of five. So that means we'd end up with portable storage interfaces there, meaning we're going to need belts feeding into the back of those. And then I guess probably just one big long belt running along the back here. So let's quickly throw these in. Then we'll have a big belt running along the back, which will be coming from the vaults. So I guess we're probably going to have the vaults over this way. So I should put the vaults in around here somewhere, but I think I want to raise them up a little bit. Maybe we should make some of that shiny create scaffolding. That stuff looks quite good. And I think we'll go for the copper one here. That looks nice. So let's make a platform for the vaults. They're all going to be two wide and six deep. So we should just need a big old platform like this. Uh, that size, I think, should be about right. Now, let's chuck on a bunch of vaults and see if we can get this working. Oh, I've actually made that one too deep. Let's do that. So, this should work. So, if we do an input and then an output on each of these, we'll have an input on the back of each of these as well. And if we use these brass tunnels here, we can then add filters on this side so only specific resources come into these areas. And if these back up, it should just loop back round and get put back into the vault. At least that's the hope. We're going to need a lot of redstone links, though. And and I didn't bring any with me, but I think I've got a bunch up in here. That's a negative. We don't have any in here whatsoever. So I guess I'm going to need to head home and grab loads of those. And to be honest, we're going to need a whole bunch of train stations as well, I think, to make this work. I've got some stations and some redstone links, and I want to try something out. So ideally, what we want to be doing is only unlocking whatever resource is... Well, whatever resource the train is here to collect, I guess. So my thinking is, if, for example, we had a station here, we'll just dump it here for now, and we called this one Cobble. And we're going to use this train for our experiments, but I believe if we pull this train into the station, it should give off a redstone signal. At least that's my hope. So it's in, and yes, it does. Okay, cool. So if we then put a redstone link there, that will activate that. So for this test, we'll just set that to Cobble in the red slots. And if this one one here was the one that was dropping off cobble we would put a receiver here which needs to be set to actually receive and cobble in the red and excellent so that should lock this hopper here that wants to only accept cobble we only want cobble coming out of there and we'll say this is the cobble vault just to keep everything in one line so we'll put the filters on those as well but if we put a redstone link here set that to receive and set that to cobble as well that should lock this funnel here so ah that's not gonna work is it we need it to unlock when the train pulls in, but that should be fairly easy if we quickly adjust this over here. So if we just have it go into a block with a redstone torch, and then do that. So those ones should now be unlocked, which means if this was all running and this had cobble in it, that will be pulling the cobble out. It will come through all of these and only get ejected when it gets to here. And what we can then do is set the next one to gravel and sand and so on. And then if we have a station for each one of these and we just make sure that they line up when the train pulls in, so we can just have essentially one train with one container. But then when it pulls into the cobble station, it just lines up with this one and then turns on the whole thing and then it just loads up cobble. That should work nicely. The key is going to be keeping these belts here clear. So as long as they can continually go round, we might get a bit of backlog on here, but if things can't get off, they'll go round again and go back into the vaults. And once the train leaves, this will lock, so it'll stop ejecting it all as well. I think 
this could work. I don't know if any of that made any sense. I was kind of thinking out loud there. But in theory, this should all work. So I'm just going to build up the rest of this system. I'm going to do the same thing over here. And then we also need to figure out how we're going to be dropping off items into these vaults. And a few moments later, we've got all that sorted. The only thing left to do, of course, is to put all the filters on when we know what we're storing here and to set up the stations. But we can't actually do that until we build the train and we know where things are going to line up. Something I can do, however, is to work out the drop-off points. And I think for that, we're probably going to have something that sort of goes over the top of the track. I think that's going to look quite nice. So first up, let's extend this out a little bit and then we'll put in something over here. So if we have a belt going up to there... Then we'll have a storage interface there, right above the middle of the track. Then we can just join those up. We can grab ourselves a funnel. And we can use that for offloading the train. And then that will just go into these vaults here. So we just have to make sure, I guess, that we've got filter on here to make sure it's only pulling out things that can be stored in these vaults. But that's simple enough. Although, once again, so it doesn't accidentally try and grab stuff, we could just put a redstone link there. So only when the train's specifically parked in the station for offloading, Will it actually offload? I mean, at the end of the day, we don't want it lining up with one of these, but at the same time also being in line with this and kind of loading and offloading at the same time, or it will never leave. I mean, all this is untested, but I think it's going to work. I don't see why it wouldn't. Apart from the lack of power, actually, maybe we should sort out some power. And I am going to be building a big power station over here. But, well, this is just belts, which means it doesn't actually add any stress. So I can run this whole thing just off of a water wheel. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do. We've not used one in ages. And we'll only need a small one, which is good. Though I could do with a rotational speed controller. But, uh, yeah, we don't have those things on us. So we're going to have to head home to get those. Well, that should be fairly straightforward. But I do want to get all this running, make sure we've got all the belts going in the right direction before we figure out a building to go around this. But I also need to build this again over this side. I do want to mirror the whole thing. And that's going to do 20 resources for us, which is fine, but we're already producing about 15 and we've only built a few factories. So we're probably actually going to need like a giant version of this as well. Maybe we could do one that's like twice as long opposite over here or something. Either way, it's going to be a massive distribution hub. So yeah, my best crack on, I guess. Where's my train? Okay, so I've got my speed controller. We can set this to a reasonable speed. We stick a giant cog in there. Look at that. Marvellous. Now let's get this thing hooked up. All right, I think I've got everything moving. It all seems to be going in the right direction. Wonderful. Now I just need to do this all over again on that side. Ooh, I wonder. Could do it with a schematic cannon, you know. In fact, I think I will. But I once again need to go grab a few bits for that. But I think it's going to be worth it because we're going to be building probably one, two, potentially another four over there as well. I mean, at least six of these things. So we may as well make things a little bit easier for ourselves. So we've got our schematic plan here. Let's just do this. And I guess we're going to need to raise that up higher. Then it needs to come out this way a few blocks. And we'll call that distribution one. Because what we might be able to do once we've actually built up a building is, is do the whole thing. But we'll see. Depends if we want them all looking the same or not, I guess. But if we now go to a schematic table, go to distribution one and make that up. And if we chuck the cannon down, put a schematic in there. And what I do need to do, of course, yep, position the schematic. That would make sense. So it's going to be around here somewhere. And then I want to mirror that. So we want to mirror it this way, I think. Yep, look at that. Perfect. Now let's just get it all lined up. That looks like it's in the right place now. Now I just need to grab a clipboard so we can get a materials list. In fact, we can just make one. So this is our checklist. Let's load up a barrel. So I think we're fully loaded. All the settings are correct. Let's just make sure. Yep, we've definitely got everything in there. Let's set this puppy going. And I can actually do a time lapse for once. Look at this. in the nick of time we're done because it's got dark and i'm scared oh geez i had those guys sneaking up behind me as well probably here for revenge for what i did over there but i do think if that's going to be the width of our building over here we could definitely have another one next to it and maybe make it twice as long because i do want to leave some space around this area to make sure we've got a fluid collection point as well because i want to be storing lava and all those sorts of things over here too wait a minute is that an LA? where did you come from i mean there's a few LA's in the mansion but i don't remember setting any of you free did one of you accidentally escape, maybe, when I checked? Either way, we'll leave him be. We do need to mend a few bits of this. The vaults never quite work when you use a schematic cannon. But if we just remove one of the dodgy ones, that should fix it. That's the vaults fixed. Now I just need to apply some power and make sure everything is going the right way. Which, because we've mirrored it, it 
probably won't be. And nope, that is all going the wrong way. Easy fix. We can just remove one of these gearboxes. And there we go. That's better. Everything is now going the correct direction. Brilliant. So I guess now what we need to do is to make a building. And I do have an idea of a pallet. I've got a rough idea in my head of how it's going to look. I think we're going to have sort of two side bits here. And then we're going to have a taller bit in the middle. And that's going to be the connector. And palette wise, I think I'm going to be making use of acacia. I really do like the sort of metallic look that the mixed fire logs and the mixed acacia logs give. We're going to use a bit of reinforced spruce and some edge cut spruce log. And for the roof, I think I'm going to use mangrove. I want to have a nice bit of color over here. Well, that's the basic palette. Let's see what we can do. has taken forever, but I love it. Look at that. I think that's come out pretty well. So you already know the functionality inside. I've just tidied it up a little bit. I, I probably won't put any floors up here. I don't think it's needed, to be honest. I quite like the fact that it's open. And on the outside here, I was going to do mangrove on that roof there, but I changed my mind and decided to add a little bit more colour. So we've gone with warped wood, and I think the limestone there really works as well. I've added a few pipes and lights and some very cool windows as well. And I think with that... At least this first building is done. How it's going to look, at least. Because I still do need to work out where the stations are going to go, but obviously for the trains, they're going to be collecting stuff from here and dropping it off to other factories. Well, that train doesn't actually exist yet, so I can't do the main stations. But I can at least sort out the drop-off station we've got here and link that up to the two freight trains we've already got. So I'm going to run off now, and I think we're going to do the log train first. I think we'll store all of the wood on this side here. So we need to make sure we can get the log train in over here and offload it via this. So let's go grab the thing. So this is the train we want, and we're going to need to connect up something over here. But let's get it over to our new distribution center first. So you have been relieved of duty, Mr. Chicken. Let's take this thing over. Well, I've got the train here, and the first thing I've learned is that these bits here are just a tad too low because the train is clipping through them, and that's not ideal. But alignment-wise, well, this train is just absolutely massive. So I think what I might actually need to do is have a secondary offloading point on this side, just so when a train is this big, we can still get stuff offloaded. So I think as long as we're off that main part of the track there, this should be okay. Although I might rejig all the track around this end of the yard at some point. But in regards to a station, we're going to need to have one, well, pretty much on this bend. And I don't like that. So I'm actually going to just extend this down a little bit further. So let's just rejig a little bit of this track here. So if we have a station about here, that should line up fairly nicely over this side. Now we just need to put an offloader in over this side. And I think putting it right about here will make sense. But I've just realised I don't have any more belts on me. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Such a long journey home. Maybe I've got some in here. I do not. But I am right next to the ocean, so at least it's easy for me to get some kelp, I suppose. It's going to be much quicker to make some than it will be to go home and get some. So I think that should work. I just need to put an offloader on here now. So let's disassemble the train. Ah, it's on a bend. I can't do that here. Should be able to do it over here, though. So if we disassemble it here, let's have a look at what we're dealing with inside. So we can literally just get away with putting one right there. That's good. We just had a log underneath. And now if we put this train back on the other track, we should hopefully have it all linking up nicely. But while we're here, we're going to get rid of these Nixie tubes that have been stuck to it forever. So did I put it in the right place? I did. Excellent. So as soon as we get a funnel on there, that is going to start offloading. But before we do that, we need to sort out all the filters over here. And to be honest, I'm going to need to make sure I lock all of these as well. A couple of hours of jiggery pokery later, and I think I've got everything sorted. You may notice the other freight train is just heading off as well. That one's also scheduled to come over here now. But mostly, I've just simplified everything. I really didn't need to have all the big swoopy thing going around here because that was actually going to cause me problems. What occurred to me was that if, for 
for example, I'm using lots and lots of cobble, then, well, the cobble that comes in on the train is going to keep going in the vault. But the train's also going to be bringing, for example, scoria. And that's not going to be able to get in the vault, because I'm not using so much of that. And that means that scoria would end up clogging the sort of donut-shaped conveyor belt that we had down the front here, therefore preventing any more cobble from getting off the train and just causing a whole lot of issues. So instead, we're now offloading down the bottom here, which also means we only need one redstone link just to activate or deactivate this, because it doesn't matter if these belts fill up. And the offloading goes over the top here. And what I've also got now is a buffer. So each one of these vaults also has a drawer with a void thing on it, so that if, for example, example that once again the scoria is still coming over and the cobble is needed so it's all going into the vault and so on but the scoria is still coming it can now go into this drawer here and each of these drawers have got six diamond storage upgrades on meaning they can hold about 130,000 on top of what's in the vaults they've got a chute so they can keep the vault filled up and then they've got a void upgrade so that if it does still keep coming it will just get voided and then I've just done exactly the same thing over here on the wood side and that does now mean that everything can work exactly as expected and we don't have our car cargo trains or our freight trains I should say going over to our main base anymore they just come here instead but that does mean the step one of our distribution center is now done we're going to need more of these buildings so we'll get some of those up over time over here but we also really need a fluid collection and storage point as well but most importantly we're going to need a train so that when we do run out of resources over at our main base we can just send a train off to come here and collect what we need but that's going to have to wait for next episode because I'm absolutely knackered this episode's taken me a week to make and you can probably tell by the amount of landscaping and terraforming we've had to do but I hope you you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.